Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest star Martin Sheen. Special guest star Colin Wilcox Horn. Tonight's episode Betrayed. <laughs> well, it was a good try. Yeah, nothing ventured. Hey, what are you doing? We well, had the right of way, but it was boy. going too fast. Radioactive material. Maybe it's a hot truck. <laughs> oh, you're bad. You are bad this morning. Really bad. <laughs> The truck carries radioactive material, belongs to California Northern University, and is so labeled. Its direction is unknown. The subject vehicle was hijacked from the Cal Northern campus at 0710 hours. Inspector Zay from the headquarters. Possible hijacked vehicle observed going east on Marina at Buchanan. We're in pursuit. Okay, well, what about the stash? Well, you bet I saw him throw it, and I saw him belt my partner to get a chance to do it. Will you just give us the dates, and we'll both be there? Scratch Taylor, he's got an alibi. He was in court all day yesterday trying to beat an assault rap. Well, I guess we knew that when we nailed him. Listen, uh, you got something smaller for a buck? Did you look in the kitty? Yeah, but there's not enough. Put in an IOU. Oh, come on, come on now. A dime. You gotta have a dime, man. How come I always gotta have a dime when you never do? What do you mean, never do? If I kept track of how much money I put in for your coffee habit, I'd have a week's pay by now. Okay, buddy boy. What's chewing on you? I don't know. I guess it's, uh... That bank guard just about to retire. Boom. Also, all these dead ends. I just got this from R and I. So that's it, huh? Pride. Now wait a minute. Wait just one minute. Now, before you get the old needle in too far, remember you're the man that told me to listen to my gut as well as my head, and my gut tells me that woman's covering up. There's nothing she had to cover on a record like this. Not even a parking ticket. No debt, save one credit. Same address for the past 17 years, same phone number, same job. There's no passport. That means she didn't do any traveling. Right. Lifestyle hasn't changed any. There's nothing here that sounds like all of a sudden she jumped into the middle of a bank. You're right. I got nothing. All I got is what I feel and what I saw in that film. A picture of a woman walking towards a man with a gun. I know she's as straight as could be, but you want to tell me she's going to talk that dude into backing out the same way he came in or something? I mean, what was she doing? You tell me. I don't know, Mike. I don't know, but I want to find out. I want to put a team on her and have her staked out. Hold it. Hold it right there. Now, wait a minute. Maybe I did tell you sometime or other to play your hunches. But you do know, don't you, that somebody has to pay for them. Huh? Now, what do you think we'd look like asking for a stakeout on information like this? Oh, Mike? Yeah. I found your cabin. Oh, good. Here's that number, Steve. Thanks, Bill. What number? Just a hunch. I'm not leaving myself open yet.
That's uh, sevens in the six. Eight, 22. 23 miles an hour? Yeah. You mean a kid can keep up that speed for four and a half hours? Sometimes faster and longer. Oh, come on, no I'm way. I'm not kidding. Inspectors 8-1, Harbor Police have a possible homicide at the marina. Will you respond? Inspectors 8-1, 10-4, will respond. All right, hotshot. Let's see how fast you can pedal this thing. Hello, Doc. Morning, Mike. Ernie. Any details? Norwegian freighter crew discovered her body. She wasn't in the water more than a couple of hours. She's no more than 16, 17 at the most. That's my guess, Mike. No wallet? The position of the body says she went off the bridge. Could have jumped. Well, there was bruises on her upper arms that looked like handprints. As if she was held from behind. Couldn't those have happened when she hit the water, when they took her out? Not likely. There's a bruise on her lower right jaw that doesn't appear to have come from the fall either. That's about as much as I can give you before the autopsy. Thanks. We'll hold on to these. Okay, Mike. See you later. See you, buddy. As soon as we get back, check those phone numbers, will you? Right. You okay? This is Lieutenant Stone. I want to make a long-distance telephone call to Tucson, Arizona. You can charge it to my home phone, please. Hi, Kim Dion. Jeannie, this is Mike. Hello, mon petit cochon. Ça va? I'm fine, sweetheart. How are you? Hi, moi ça va, ça va. Écoute, boulot, boulot, tu connais. Well, I won't hold you up. I just called because I received your letter. The one about the bike race, 50 miles? Pretty rough, huh? Well, you get back to your biology. T'as un bon souci? No, 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 you're getting good grades now. I don't want to mess them up. I'll call you later. Uh, but, but listen, just take care of yourself, will you? That's the important thing. And, and you didn't tell me the time. Du temps? Yeah, the bike race. Oh, ben, je dirais 7 heures et 5 minutes. 7 hours and 5 minutes? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. You know, you're going to have to get in shape if you want to compete with the champs. They can do 100 miles in four and a half hours, sometimes longer and faster. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, I'm sure. Everything is fine. I'm going to have to hang up now, sweetheart. And you get an A in that exam, do you hear? <laughs> you too, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's what it was, huh? You're wondering if that girl this morning had written any letters lately? Did anyone ever tell you the doors were to knock on? Gee, no, Lieutenant. They always told us at the Academy they were to knock down. How's Jeannie doing? Well, she's doing fine. How are you doing? Good. I ran those numbers. They were all phone booths. Maybe drops? Got any addresses? Yep. Well, then let's go take a look.